Share the Power of a Wish is sponsored by Central Maine Power and Martin Surplus and Salvage. You at home, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marissa Bodner. And I'm Dave Ede. Make-A-Wish Maine is celebrating its 30th anniversary tonight as it continues granting wishes to local children battling critical illnesses. And your support is crucial to keeping that power of a wish alive. Make-A-Wish and their volunteers are standing by live right now, ready to take your calls. You see the number there on your screen. Since its founding in 1993, Make-A-Wish Maine has granted more than 1,700 wishes all throughout the state. With each wish granted, a child gets more than just a temporary experience. They get a long-lasting distraction from the realities of a difficult diagnosis, painful treatments, and the loss of a typical childhood experience. Well, this year, Make-A-Wish Maine hopes to grant 75 wishes. That's an average of one every five days, and each wish costs on the average about $7,000. So your gift, no matter how big or small, really goes a long way. And right now, your wish could double. Just call or text the numbers on your screen or scan the QR code. It's our power hour right now until 8 o'clock. Every donation will be matched up to $10,000. That's thanks to a big donation by the Lobster Shack at Two Lights. Our volunteers standing by right now ready to take your pledge. Again, here is how you can donate. Just call the number on your screen right now. Uh, you can talk live with uh, one of the people here tonight donating their time. You can also make a secure donation online. We've got the link right on our website, WGME.com. Over the last 30 years, Make-A-Wish Maine has only grown in bringing life-changing experiences to children all across Maine. Right now, we're uh, taking a look back at the founders of Make-A-Wish and how it all started. He was four pounds, seven ounces. The uh, nurse brought him to me and said, don't get attached, he won't live. And I said, yes, he will. I knew he would never grow up. I knew that just by holding him, looking at him. Tommy started telling all of us the story about Chris. I said, hey, do you think we can give this guy, a, this young man, a, a show and tell around the helicopter? And his answer was, I don't know, we'll give him a ride in it. Well, I went over there about 20 minutes to late, and he was already out in the driveway. And I wish you could have seen the look on his face when I drove up. He knew it was real. A smile from ear to ear. On May 2nd, he said, Mommy, I'm not feeling real good. On May 3rd, he passed away, just that quick. We all said basically at the same time, there's more children out there. Why don't we go find them? The people who are there today carry that torch. It's totally universal. There's no language boundaries, no country boundaries, no philosophy, no attitude, no political boundaries. It's universal. Same rules, same, all kinds of same things that we set up when we sat down and said, how are we going to do this thing? I've often said it, it was just a snowball effect. And a snowball rolling down the hill, it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't think there was any way that any of us could vision how this was going to spread. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And none of this would be possible without donations from you and from the businesses in our community. Joining us now, the fine folks from Martins with a gift from Make-A-Wish Maine, a very generous gift. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah, we're happy to be here. You know, um, this is myself, Jake Martin, Andrew Martin. Um, our grandfather started the business back in 1964. Um, he was a family man with five children, and family values have always been a part of the business, um, connecting with the communities we're in. So, you know, especially with helping with the kids, we, we feel it's the least we can do. And why does this organization and the mission resonate so much with you in particular? Well, as Jake mentioned, from the moment the business was started, the uh, morals and everything was about being a family business. Um, and our donation to this day still really matters about kids, especially seeing kids that are having such a hard time and such a terrible point in their life to have a moment of a glimmer of hope. Um, it really makes a big difference and it's heartwarming to see. 
Thank you so much for being here and for the generous donation. We can't wait to see all of the wishes that come true because of this. Dave, I'll send it over to you. All right, Marissa, thanks. And thanks to the great folks at Martin's. Well, next, we'd like to introduce you to Morgan. Her wish, a treehouse. Make-A-Wish Maine volunteers not only granted her wish, but they managed to surprise a young lady who's not easy to surprise. It's so much more than I guess I thought it would be. I mean, it's a whole community. It's, it's everything from the donors, the volunteers. And we've met a, literally a village of people that have done something for Morgan in some way. I just can't say enough about it. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. Seeing a smile on your child's face is magic. You know, hearing them laugh is magic. My wish was to have a tree house. It's warm, it's comfortable, it's a house in the trees. Morgan originally asked for a room that would have a Hobbit theme. Through talking with her and sharing Pinterest pins and spending some time with her, I discovered that it was really more of kind of a fairy, woodland, Middle Earth themed treehouse that she was looking for. So I really tried to focus on giving her a room that was magical and mystical, and, but earthy and grounded in woodland at the same time. They asked her to select three trees from our land. We got home, Make-A-Wish had already set up number three site, number two site, and then when she got to number one site, it was already set up that it said, you know, future site of Morgan's treehouse. <laughs> she was totally surprised, which isn't easy to do with Morgan, but Make-A-Wish pulled it off. She's a sweetheart. Uh, Morgan is just uh, I mean, a great kid, very, very nice family. Very appreciative of everything that everybody was doing. My son works for me, and I got help from a gentleman, Tom Robinson. We kind of sat down and went over roughly what we were going to do. And Great to have a friend involved and, and my son involved. It is a great feeling to be able to do something for somebody. When I was younger, I had headaches, so they decided to do an MRI, and, and then there's like a spot in my head, and they didn't know what it was. She was diagnosed with her two brain tumors when she was nine. Then we moved here, and they were like, okay, it's the last MRI if it hasn't grown anymore, and it grew. You know, when you hear the cancer word and it's your kid, you just, you know, you just ask why, and then what do we do? It's not completely clear-cut exactly what to do as we've learned uh, through this journey that there's a lot of decisions that we've made or, and, and had to make that were ours to make. And doctors guided us but they couldn't necessarily tell us what to do. Her first treatment was chemotherapy and it's very toxic. It's systematic so it doesn't just affect the cancer cells, it affects every cell. I had two anaphylactic allergic reactions from chemo. The chemo that I, I was I, had, I would have to sit there for like five hours a day. Three or four days after that, I would be nauseous and just like laying on the couch, not feeling well. I would feel fine, and then I had chemo again, so it was just like this cycle. We waited for a little bit to see if the chemo worked. It didn't. Brain tumors grew. We decided to take the smaller tumor out first through doctors here and in Boston that the best course of action would be to take the other tumor out. She told me six months into diagnosis, I must have looked worried because she said, Mom, I'm the one with the brain tumors. If anybody needs to worry, I'll let you know. I heal pretty quickly. People call me the super healer.
best parts of Make-A-Wish is that it allows the kid to take control during a time in their life when they really don't have much control over anything. So it's just been a, you know, a positive focus all around. While Morgan was out in her stretch limo with her family doing some fun stuff in Portland's Old Port, we were back at her treehouse doing all of the interior decorating and putting the final touches on the treehouse. So when she got home, there was still a bit of surprise involved. There were so many different participants and volunteers. Everybody was running around, but everybody had a, their own little project to do, and it came together pretty, pretty good. Rod was there with his crew. There were additional people there to help set up. It was really a great community effort to make this little girl's wish happen. I have two sisters. Um, they're sisters. They're both older than me. They can be a pain, but for the most part, they're really nice. Family's everything. I mean, uh, we both come from large families, and. Uh, you know, we're close, your family's there for you, and they, you know, nothing's thicker than blood, so. like, so no one's going to be at our house, it's just going to be our family. And I was like, okay, great. And then like a bunch of people were at my house, so I was like, oh my gosh. And then the TV people were here, which I didn't know until we like drove on our like road. What I want to be when I grow up is a pediatric nurse. I'm going to try to help kids as much as I can. Like me as a kid, like when I'm an adult, I want to help kids like that. My motivation was looking forward to the treehouse. You take it as it comes, you make the best decisions you can, and keep praying that she's you know, healed and keeps doing well, and uh, you know, whatever it is, we'll get through it. She's tougher than, I mean, when I grow up, I want to be as tough as she is. Keep on going and staying positive. And look who I found. Morgan is here live with us tonight taking your calls. Morgan, it's so great to see you. You look fantastic. You. And I guess you're wishing it forward tonight. Yes. When you go back and you look at that story, what was when you saw that treehouse for the first time, what was going through your mind? And how powerful was that for you, have, seeing that wish come true? Just all the amazing people that I met through the wish and how it provided me a distraction from the treatment I was going through was the most amazing experience of my life. Yeah, and it's amazing. A lot of the wishes that we've seen, a lot of them are different. Yours was a, a, a tree house. Do you still go back every now and then? And oh, yes, absolutely, all the time. Hold special memories? Yes, very much so. Thank you so much. Yes, Your story you. is uh, really breathtaking and uh, moving, and uh, we certainly hope we can have these phones ring, and we'll get you back on the, uh, back on the calls, and uh, hopefully the folks are going to call in. Thank you. Thanks so much. And you're a freshman at UNE. Yes, social work major. That's terrific. Yeah. Thanks so much, Morgan. Thank you. Marissa? And what a powerful story. And up next, we'll introduce you to Jackson and look at how his love of penguins brought him a lasting experience. Plus, a closer look at how Make-A-Wish gives back to children who've lost so much their childhood experience and what the experience is like for the doctors treating them. And you see the number there on the bottom of your screen. Volunteers are standing by ready to take your gift for Make-A-Wish Maine. We'll be right back. Share the Power of a Wish is sponsored by The Lobster Shack, Yankee Ford, Wex, Una, and Berlin City. Share the Power of a Wish is sponsored by...
Share the Power of a Wish is sponsored by Central Maine Power and Martin Surplus and Salvage. And you are looking live at the Power of a Wish phone banks where volunteers are taking your gifts right now. There's still plenty of time to call and help grant a wish to children in Maine battling critical illnesses. It's definitely lively in here. They're on mm -hmm. the phones. Well, it's penguins that are bringing joy to one Make-A-Wish kid here in Maine. Yeah, Jackson's love of penguins started with an adorable stuffed animal and took him on a journey to see a real one in person for the first time. Jackson is an amazing, spunky, and adventurous little five-year-old boy. He was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of two, two and a half. Uh, he was then treated for just about three and a half years. Um, he has done quite well with his treatment. The moment that the diagnosis was official for me, like we had been in the hospital for six days at that point. Um, they had gone through so many things with us. So having the official diagnosis for me was a little bit, okay, here we go. Like, let's get on the path to getting him better. It took a little while to sink in. Um, and to understand what he was going to go through for the next few years. When Jackson was two, before he was diagnosed, we took him to the Boston Aquarium for his birthday. And at the end of the day, Matt took him into the store and said, you can pick anything in the store that you want, Jackson. And he immediately walked up to the wall of penguins and picked up a pink penguin. And that was I what I even tried to convince him. I'm like, do you want a regular black penguin? Nope, I want the pink penguin, Dada. I'm like, okay. Because everybody commented on his penguin, and that was like a, a talking point for everybody with him, and a way that doctors, nurses, anesthesiologists, everybody could come down to his level and connect with him. His love for penguins just grew and grew and grew. Well, we start talking about the wish maybe year two. And in Jackson's case, his treatment was three and a half years, give or take a few months. So he had plenty of time to think about what he might want to do that he could look forward to and then do the trip once his portacath was removed. And he's always said, I want to grow up and be a penguin handler. The word penguin handler came out of my mouth and I think Mackenzie was like, light bulb. <laughs> Seeing the car turn the corner, uh, the limo and the window came down and Jackson's little face came out and you saw the excitement and the joy on that little boy's face and then when he got out of the car and and when they asked him how many penguins he had and he saw all the the bags and the things were out and he said well I don't know anymore because he could see how many penguins were in the in the bags it was and he put his little robe on the car ride down to Connecticut was long because every 15 minutes he asked when he was going to get there <laughs> it's a three and a half hour drive so he was very excited he was so excited I don't even know if he slept because he could he was up not at 4 in the morning wait to meet a penguin <laughs> see the excitement on his face but he was very just like can I touch him now like so but when as it was happening I mean it was just amazing if when he was touching the penguin he mom was sitting next to him he goes mom mom pinch me pinch me is this real like he was just thought he was in a dream and he had an amazing time my favorite part was watching his amazement uh, even before he got to touch the penguin you could just tell how engaged he was like and hanging on every word that the penguin handler was telling him and saying to him. Um, it just really reminded me like how much passion he has. Doing the painting was the best part yeah. I think for him because he just I don't know he just loved watching it. It was it, the the penguin would walk across the canvas and leave the footprints and his giggles and his laughs were just not just a. Uh, Ha ha ha, you know, kind of like a fake little, he was just belly giggling and laughing. He loved it so much. I can't imagine as a parent what it would be like to have a sick child. And to, to know that that child had that to look forward to, 
I just I think it would be worth all the money in the world to to know that my baby was going to get up tomorrow and say, hey, I'm going to go to Disney or I'm going to go to the Lego factory or I'm going to go see a penguin. There's no amount of money you could give to help these children to have, like she said, that spark grow. So, so I kind of think about it all year when I'm having a bad day. It doesn't even compare to these, these children. So, It is entirely therapeutic for our patients and families to have a Make-A-Wish and I have seen it completely change people's lives. Every part of this journey that we went on for three plus years impacted our lives in such a huge way. And having Jackson have the Make-A-Wish experience, especially the way that it felt for us where it was at the end of his treatment, was not only something to look forward to throughout the treatment, but was just the best way to wrap it up and remind ourselves that we made it. <laughs> well, we are back out live. We're so grateful for the folks at Central Maine Power. They're joining us live tonight, Amy and Katie. Thank you so much for being here. What are some of the things you've noticed? You, you, we were talking off camera. Uh, CMP's helped grant three wishes already. What are some of the positive impacts you've seen from those wishes? Yeah, I mean, Make-A-Wish Maine's been around for 30 years, granted over 1,700 wishes for Maine children. Uh, CMP has been honored, really, to grant three of those. And it's just wonderful to see the family meet the children or the child, the families that are impacted. And then to have that employee involvement just makes it that much better. Yeah, I mean, CMP has always been known to power it up, but to, the power of a wish is so, uh, and it's so important. It's so vital when these young kids are going through uh, you know, they're so resilient, uh, but, you know, to see that wish come true uh, and the impact it makes is incredible. It is, and you know, it impacts all of us. I think, you know, Maine's a very small community. I think almost everybody probably knows somebody who has been impacted by Make-A-Wish in one way or another. And for us to be able to play a small part in that is great. And you know, we, we are thankful to be able to partner with Make-A-Wish, WGME, Fox 23, uh, to be able to do this. So thank you for, for hosting. Uh, well, small part, I don't know about that. $25,000, thank you so much, that's amazing. You're welcome, thank you for having right. us. Amy and Katie, thank you so much, Marissa. Dave, thanks. From the Make-A-Wish kids to their families and communities, a wish granted is really felt by everybody involved, including the medical teams treating those children. A child who is undergoing treatment for a life-threatening medical condition has so much of normal childhood taken away from them, so much of their decision-making uh, ability, so much of their normal experiences with playmates and friends and, and siblings. It is so long and so arduous. It robs so many, many of the normal childhood experiences um, from a child and from, from their family. You run into a family that is uh, out of control with their life. Uh, they have circumstances imposed upon them that they never would have signed up for or dreamed that they would be in that position. There are medications that we can provide. There are treatments that we can administer. And yet there are pieces missing from that that can only be filled by the impact of a wish experience. The beauty of Make-A-Wish is it's incredibly simple. It is that intangible object that, quite honestly, I cannot order from the pharmacy. I cannot write a prescription for. You see a child before they go on their wish, and when they come back with their family after the wish, it's, it's often like seeing a totally different child. You just see it in their faces, this idea of thinking outside their current moment in time. It's an unsaid power that these experiences can give these kids. And, you know, these are kids that are living longer. They're living better. They're having more fun in their life. And it all started with one experience, and that was their wish. 
my favorite wish is the next one. And the one after that, and the next 10, and the next 100. Because as with life, a wish has less to do with what has been and more to do with what's coming up. And joining us now is Kate Vickery, president and CEO of Make-A-Wish Maine. We just heard about the next wish. I know you were telling us earlier, two families actually left today on their wish to Disney World. Yeah, it's perfect timing. We're gonna get them down there before the snowstorm. But yeah, it is that end quote that you just saw there is, is so impactful. It really is about the next wish and it is about looking forward and not looking back. And that's what's so important about providing this hope and this uplift for these kids and our families. And that's one of the things we've heard is what a game changer this can be for the kids and their treatment and their recovery. What do you see? You know, you obviously get to kind of witness that. Absolutely, yeah. And it's different for every child that we work with. But I think what we have seen is that it can be a turning point once you start to introduce that the prospect of hope, the giving them something else so they have control over after it's all been taken away from them for the most part with a diagnosis and all their treatment and saying, hey, focus on this. Tell us what you think, what you want, what would bring you the most joy. Um, and then just to watch it all play out is really powerful. And speaking of game changers, you know, what sort of an impact does an event like this one today have on Make-A-Wish Maine and being able to make so many more wishes come true? Absolutely. Certainly is a game changer. It's been a tremendous day. We're so fortunate and grateful to everybody who's been a part of it, whether it's, you know, our partnership with you, the volunteers who have been here, our corporate partners, can't say enough about their, their generosity, but really all of the people who have called in and who have generously donated today, that's so aligned with what we do when we grant wishes. It takes a community to grant each and every wish and it's take a community to raise those funds as well. So today's been great. We're so grateful and we look forward to the next 30 years and the next 75 wishes year after year. So it's been great. We look forward to seeing what comes next too and all of the wishes granted. Kate, thank you so much for joining us and being here. And the phones are lighting up. It is very lively in here and uh, it's getting active, Dave. It certainly is. We're in uh, just a couple minutes to go uh, for our power hour where your donations can be matched up to ten thousand dollars again thanks to the lobster shack in cape elizabeth but uh really this has been amazing uh marissa there's the information on the screen uh text wish me to 243-725 or call 833-362-7363 and we can't stress that enough. The power hour continues just a few more minutes till eight o'clock. The donations will be matched. Thanks so much to the Lobster Shack at Two Lights up to $10,000. But the phone lines are staying open until 11. 11 o'clock tonight. So keep calling in. And we've seen the power of what wishes can do for these young kids. And please, if you can help out, that would be, uh, that would be amazing. Yeah, we thank all of you so much for your support. And thank you so much for joining us here tonight.